Alrighty, you guys ready to rock the house? What's up? What's up? Cool, cool. Let me take this, put it over here. We'll get started here in just a second. I'm gonna run over, <clears throat> get a uh... look at. There's Chelsea eating. <laughs> Say hi, Chelsea. Get a bottle of water real quick. Need some wada wada wada. Say hi, Chelsea. <laughs> All right, you guys ready to rock the house? We are going to talk about some killer stuff today. Um, what's up? What's up? So, where are you guys coming in from? Where are you guys dialing in from? Connecticut. Gotta love Connecticut. Connecticut rocks absolutely. Florida, Miami. Surprise, Arizona. Houston, Baltimore. Yeah, it's 108 degrees out. Dallas, West Palm Beach, Florida. Oklahoma, Miami. Atlanta, Dallas, Seattle, Central Florida. Sweet. Did you guys watch the uh, NBA Finals last night? Hot Menta, Louisiana. Steve, Stephen Curry, man, was amazing. New York City. Uh, Detroit, killer, cool, cool. Houston, you didn't watch it? It was pretty killer. It was pretty killer. Um, alrighty, this is now part two. Chicago, Chef Curry, yes, he rocks. All right, this is uh, this is part two of a two. Actually, it's a four part series. We're gonna do part three tomorrow, part four on Friday. And uh, what's up, Vitaly? Um, and what we're going to talk about specifically, um, well, actually in the first, first one, first broadcast, we literally talked about, um, how to go out and get set up so you can get your first mailer out the door and you can get the phone ringing. Uh, we talked about the phone system we use. We talk about the, um, I gave you the actual list, uh, to be able to mail. I gave you the, um, the, uh, the, basically the postcard you could use to actually mail out to get the phone to ring. Okay. So the goal is, and if you're joining us for the first time, we are talking about flipping houses, wholesaling houses. And, uh, my name is Sean Terry here from flip to freedom.com. And if you haven't seen, uh, the episode, you can go to here, you can go to flip to freedom, uh, .com. If you go there and if you go on blog right here. Or go down. You can see it. You can see the. This is episode number one right there. How to make five k in thirty days. Last flipping houses. Um, so that's episode one. If you haven't seen it, you can watch that. That that entire uh, episode right here, uh, Periscope episode, was uh, was set to get your phone to melt. Okay. It's primarily phone to melt. You can go to flip2freedom.com to check that out. And uh, and that's to get your phone to melt with motivated sellers. Now, like I said. Do I work with Cody Sperber? Yeah, I know Cody very well. We just uh, we just wholesale the house together two weeks ago, up in Carefree. It's about a half million dollar house. So yeah, he's uh, in the same market. I talk to him all the time. Um, good friend, hung out with him. He's a uh, he's a he's a cool dude. Yeah, it is uh, 108 degrees out here. So anyway, so if you are if you're brand new. And uh, first time you're joining me, my name's Sean Terry, flip2freedom.com, flip the number two freedom.com. And uh, I'm basically showing you how to go out and, and, uh, and flip houses using no cash, no credit, and make $5,000 in less than 30 days. Now, this is part two of a four part series. Um, and last uh, week, we talked about how to get the phone to ring with motivated sellers. Now, the majority of the public is going to sell with a realtor. 95 to 97 percent are going to sell their house, right, with a realtor. There's a very small percentage, roughly 3 percent of the population, 5 percent of the population that are going to um, uh, sell to an investor <laughs> to kill it. Um, but the bottom line is, is the uh, the you know, when you're targeting motivated sellers, there is a distress situation we can specifically target. It could be financial distress, it could be circumstantial distress, like a divorce. Um, they could have an absentee owner who owns a property, who has a tenant that trashed it, and now they don't want to deal with the property anymore. It could be, uh, like I said, a divorce situation. It could be a financial where it's a tax default situation, where it's a pre-foreclosure situation. In the first episode, I showed you exactly how to target those 
um, people and then we can send them a postcard or a letter and have our phone ring with these motivated sellers. I also gave you the script that we use to talk to the motivated sellers so we know what we're talking about, what we're saying, okay? So, so in this particular uh, Periscope episode, I wanna specifically talk about uh, number one is uh, what to bring on the appointment because your primary goal when you're talking to a motivated seller, right, is to set the appointment. Once you set the appointment, now you're gonna obviously then go on the appointment, right? So we wanna, now we're gonna talk about going on the appointment, you know, kind of what to do before the appointment, the kind of, the folder you have to have, right, pulling the comps and the information. We're gonna talk about how to make an offer. I'm gonna give you a cool calculator that maybe you've seen, maybe you haven't. It's a, it's a, it's a comp calculator that you can type in some information. It'll tell you exactly what to offer on the property. It's pretty killer. I'll give you that for free. Um, and then um, how to make a low offer, right, to a seller, right? Because here's the deal, and we talked about uh, last week, it's like if you're gonna buy a stock, you in the, in the in the stock is trading at a hundred dollars, and let's say it's well one twenty five, one thirty. Let's say it's Apple. You can't get that stock for sixty thousand dollars. You can't do it. There's no way to get that stock for sixty thousand. So, but a house. When what's great about real estate is you can get a hundred thousand dollar house for fifty thousand, a hundred twenty thousand dollar house for sixty grand. You can do that in real estate because there are certain sellers that are distressed, and you can get that under contract, and you can flip it or wholesale it. Uh, for huge profits. Now, wholesaling, what's great about it, you don't need cash or credit because the buyer, your end buyer, is paying all the cash to close your transaction, which is awesome. So if you have a, you know, you got a contract for 50,000 with a seller, you get a contract for 60,000 with a buyer, right? Now you got two contracts. You got two. You got one for 50 with a seller, one for 60 with a cash buyer. The cash buyer is going to bring in 100% of the funds of which 50,000 is going to go to the seller, so they're excited, they're ecstatic, they don't have to pay real estate commissions, they didn't have to fix up the property. 10,000 goes to you for putting the deal together, and now the buyer gets a property below market where he can fix it, turn around, sell it, or he can buy it and rent it or do whatever he wants to do with it. You know, so the cool thing is we can do this over and over and over again. Um, you know, this month, it's, it's already what, 17th of the month? We've done, multiple deals, close to $130,000 worth of revenue, and the month's not even over. We'll do close to two, two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000 in revenue this month in June by doing this over and over again. Most people don't even make $300,000 in 10 years. What's great about if you learn this business, you can do it in a month if you want. Now we're just talking about making five grand. We're talking about, you know, instead of making 10, we're talking about just narrowing it down to the core specifics so you can go out and uh, and generate revenue and make uh, a, 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 you know incredible income in learning the process once you do it once. Now, I had a coaching student in here yesterday. We're here all day and we kind of went through everything and and uh, and and we basically boiled everything down to the simplest parts where you can you you can contract a house and you can sell a house. So so okay, and then we're going to talk about how to make the low offer and we're going to talk about two closing techniques that you can use um, to get deals closed with sellers. So you just don't walk in with a seller and say, what do you think? And they go, I wanna think about it, and then you walk out the door and you get nothing, right? So you wanna be able to close the transaction, get the deal done and get it closed. And a plus, um, and I'm, I'm actually gonna show you my contract and how to fill it out and kind of the steps to fill it out. It's very simple, it's a two-page contract you can get signed with the seller um, to get the deal done. Now, also we have a, Ton of stuff going on here, so I, I know, but we got a thousand dollar cash giveaway. So I'm going to give one person a thousand dollars cash, right? And it's going to be picked um, at random if you do basically three things. Now let me get my uh, screen up here so I can show. All right, thousand dollar entry rule winning, winning for winning rules for winning. One is you got to follow me on Periscope. Okay, so you got to first off, we're going to look to see. Right, if you're following on Periscope, number two is share the broadcast, okay? So if you are on the broadcast right now, what you wanna do is swipe to the right, swipe to the right, if you're on an iPhone, right? And you'll see, you can basically swipe to the right. And what you can do is you can click that little share button, share the broadcast with your members. We can actually see this, which is cool. And then tweet about the show 
uh, using hashtag flip to freedom. So tweet about the show using hashtag flip to freedom. What we're going to do is we're going to go in, check uh, Twitter. Um, on Twitter, go to, uh, we're going to search all the hashtags for flip to freedom. We're going to make sure you share in the broadcast, make sure you, um, uh, follow on Periscope. And then what we're going to do is put them into a bucket and we're going to do a drawing on the fourth, um, uh, fourth, which is Friday. We're going to go through the, uh, number four, uh, number two is we're going to talk about tomorrow. On number three, we're going to talk about, uh, tomorrow. And number four is going to be the, uh, the closing, actually selling the property and how to do that. So it's a four part series is part two. Um, so that's how you can win a thousand dollars cash. I'm going to pick one person out. I'm going to put a cashier's check and a FedEx. I'm going to send it out to him with a t-shirt, um, and, uh, and congratulate them for doing that. So follow me on Periscope. If you're on Android, just swipe up, <clears throat> right? And then share the broadcast with all your followers. If you're on iPhone, swipe to the right and you can share the broadcast and then tweet about it using the hashtag flip. Too. All right, enough of that. So that's $1,000, that's how to win the $1,000 cash. All right, so let's get into it. You guys ready? You ready to take notes? We're gonna talk uh, about some killer stuff. Let me get this off my computer here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually take you into my computer. So I'm going to, I got one hand, I'm gonna be on, on, on here showing you stuff, and the next hand I'm gonna be kind of typing um, and showing you some cool stuff. So uh, we, we got a lot to cover. So let's, let's get into it. Okay, so now let's bring you up to speed. So now you've, um, you set up your phone system using CallRail, which we talked about in the last episode. Um, you've got the phone, right? You've got the list you want to mail. You got the phone number. Now you've uh, got the mail, uh, basically mail suite that I sent you to, which is gobigprinting.com forward slash flip to freedom. Um, and like I said, all of this, if you want to go back and, and you want to catch up to us, go to blog. Let me flip this around. Go to blog right here, boom. And the, vid the video is right there so you can watch it. All the links are right here so you can do that. Um, so th this is everything you need right here to catch up to, uh, to episode one. Um, so the bottom line is is that that is uh, how you get to episode one. Um, and so now you get the mail piece out, you got the list you're mailing, the mail piece out, the phone, now the phone's ringing, you know what to say, you book an appointment, that's where we're at right now. So now what you're gonna do is you're going to then go on the appointment. So what do you do when you go on the appointment? I always show up anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes early for the appointment. And what I do is I'll drive around the entire neighborhood and get a good feel of the neighborhood, the subdivision where the property's at. So I'm gonna drive around the neighborhood and I uh, want to get uh, an understanding of what the comps are. Now, I use a app called Redfin or you can use Zillow. And what you can do, it's an iPhone app or an Android app, what you can do is you can look at those comps, look at some of the properties, and then you can drive around to uh, the, those particular properties and get a feel of what your, let's say, high comp is. Um, I'm actually going to bring you into a property recently we just flipped and made, I think it was like $30,000 or so. Um, and, uh, and on that particular property, you know, you want to make sure that other comparable pop properties are similar. Um, and they're not different. You, you don't want to go to a house that you thought was a comp and it's a two-story brand new build to your one-story junker, right? It's a, it, it's, a, it's a different comp. So you want to get a full understanding. Number one, uh, that's incredibly important. Number two is that um, you want to understand the market because your seller is going to, uh, they're going to drive around. They're going to know the market. So if you know just as much as they do or more than they do, then you are now a, um, a educated professional that's going in to purchase their house and you know what the heck you're talking about. So a lot of sellers, you know, are, I've been in houses before where the house is 1,300 square feet and the seller goes, hey, the house down the street's going for $300,000. I think my house is worth 300 grand. And you look at it and that house is 2,500 square feet. It's, you know, 1,200 square feet bigger than the subject property. And they want $300,000, but guess what? They're not educated. They don't understand how comparables work. Um, and they're going, hey, my house, the house down the street. And if you don't know what you're talking about, you're going to sit there going, uh, really? Uh, I didn't know it was going for that much. 
But your comeback to the seller, say, listen, I went and drove by that property. First off, Mr. Seller, that's a two-story. It's in mid condition. It's fully renovated. And it's about 1,200 square feet bigger than your house, Mr. Seller. Obviously, that's not a comp, is it? You know, if we look at the average price per square foot, that's going to put your house less than we actually offered you, Mr. Seller. So, uh, you know, so we can we can take that number or we can talk about what we're talking. So what you do is you're educating the seller during the process, okay? So you want to drive the neighborhood. Take Use the, uh, the Zillow app or the Redfin app. Drive around there. Make sure you guys can hear me okay. Drive around there and uh, and get a really good feel of the um, the area, the other houses, the comps um, before you talk to the seller. Then you want to show up at your appointment on time. Okay, don't be five to ten minutes late. Um, in the Flip to Freedom Academy, which is a membership site where I go much more in detail about uh, about detailed specifics. Um, I talk about four different personality types. There's a analytical personality type. There's a uh, what we call a uh, an aggressive red personality type that um, is very fast paced and get to the point. The analytical, um, they're very detail orientated and very time sensitive. Um, there's a social conscious type of person that cares more about what's happening around them um, and ab about the situation, how it impacts everybody else. And then there's a, uh, a social person, we call a blue person, and that social person um, is, uh, is very interested in building a relationship. So I'm not, I don't have time to get into all the four personality type types and how to read handshakes and all that type of stuff with, uh, with sellers, but the bottom line is you wanna show up on time. Because if for some reason you have a red personality or if you have a green personality, they're very time sensitive. And if you show up late to a green, a analytical person, they get very mad. They get, they get, they get, they, they, they believe that, that, uh, that their time is valuable and you, you're not serious about the situation. You instantly kill rapport with that seller showing up five to 10 minutes late. Okay, you cannot do it. I actually, in my business, we go back and we talk to the sellers after my outside sales guy actually goes on the appointment to get an evaluation on how he performed. Was he on time? Was the offer uh, right? What you know? How how did you feel about the situation? Did he give you good information? Did he do go through an iPad presentation we talk about? So you know, did he do that? And guess what? We're able to correct and be able to uh, really get a good understanding of the impact and first impression um, that our guys. Because listen, I'm paying about two hundred bucks, two hundred fifty bucks a lead. I want these leads to be able to be handled correctly and professionally. Um, you know, and and my also say this guy is making a ton of money. So you know, obviously we want to make sure that it's uh, this done correctly. So um, prior to the appointment, right? We want to make sure we uh, drive the neighborhood. What to bring on the appointment? We want to bring the three lowest of the low comparable sales. We want to bring two real estate purchase contracts, right? And we want to bring what's called a letter of authorization. And the letter of authorization, if they have a mortgage, allows us to, in the title company, to communicate with the mortgage company to retrieve a payoff on that mortgage. So three of the lowest low comps, you know, I usually have the lead sheet too. I have the lead sheet with all the information about uh, about that. If you're using Podio, our Podio app suite, then um, inside of Podio, it has all the notes about the specific seller. Um, but usually a lead sheet, um, three of the lowest of the low comps, um, and then um, and then the uh, uh, letter of authorization, and then two purchase contracts, one for the seller and one for you, okay? If you just take one purchase contract, right, and you have it and you leave with a purchase contract, guess what? If you have an analytical personality type, if you have maybe a red aggressive personality type, even social conscious, because there's a trust factor there, then guess what? They're, they're, they're gonna be very uncomfortable of you leaving with the contract and not leaving them an identical copy or an actual copy of that contract, so I always bring two purchase contracts, one for the seller and one for me. All right, so now that's your file. On your manila folder, you're going to have uh, your uh, the property address and information so you can keep track of uh, keep track of what's going on. So now you're going to show up to the house, right? You're going to show up early to the house. You're going to have your file folder. You knock on the door to the seller, right? 
And you go, the seller opens the door, and you go, hey, Mr. Smith, how you doing? My name's Sean Terry from 1-800-FAIR-OFFER or whatever company you're from. And uh, and I'm here for my appointment to uh, come around and look at the property, see if I can give you a fair cash offer. And the seller goes, oh, great, glad to have you here. Let me show you around, right? When you first walk in the house, the goal, right, is to build a rapport as fast as humanly possible. You want to build a rapport with the seller because that is critical because people do business with people that they like and trust. And people like people like themselves. If people like people like themselves, right, then you want to almost like – duplicate or be a chameleon to that type of person. Now, if you have, if there's a dog that comes up and you jump back and go, oh my gosh, I hate dogs. Dogs suck, right? Well, guess what's going to happen? People like people like themselves. Guess what? Now you got a dog person. That guy's not going to like you, right? So the other thing is, um, is that, uh, if you do that, I'm, I'm going to, let me see if I, I'm going to, I am going to, uh, there we go. I'm going to hide chat real quick just so I can focus on trying to get all you guys a question. And now I'll open it up for questions uh, if you don't mind. All right. So um, the so then people like people like themselves. So you want to build a rapport because if you build rapport uh, with them, then what's going to happen is you're going to get a like and a trust factor with the seller. And if they like and trust you, they're going to want to do business with you. So what are some easy ways to build rapport? Well, if they have a dog – and the dog comes up, you want to pat the dog, Scruffy, what's going on, can't pat the dog? If they have a cat, if they have a gerbil, if they have a lizard or an iguana, guess what? You're a lizard and iguana lover. You're a dog lover. You're a cat lover, whatever the case may be. But just don't say, ah, I hate dogs. Otherwise, they're not going to like you. The next thing you do is you're going to look around their house and try to find something about them that they can talk about. You know, I've been in the houses and I've seen them where they have all their kids displayed and their grandkids. And I go, holy cow, look at all the, you got a gigantic family. You know, what, what's the situation? And they go, oh, I got the grandkids. And oh, then they tell about the grandkids and what the grandkids are doing and, and vacations they went on. And one's, one does this and the other one does that, you know, and all this type of stuff. So the cool thing is, is that you can build a rapport uh, with them in, in a way and connect with them. But the goal is to get them talking about themselves. Okay. Now, have you ever been in a situation with, with, with anybody and you're finding out information and you're talking to them and you meet them, build a rapport and you just kind of shut up and you let them talk. And then after a certain period of time, they're talking, right? And then after some time passes and they're telling your story and their life story and about this and about that and da, 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 and they go, oh my gosh, I just, I feel like I've known you. I feel like I've known you all the, you know, it seemed like someone I've known for so long. I don't know what it is. It's because people like to talk about themselves, right? People like to talk about themselves. Um, so if you ask questions about them and their life and their house and their situation and what their story is and about their kids and about their family and about their, you know, dogs or, you know, whatever, then what happens, they're going to start talking about themselves and people like to talk about themselves. So it's going to instantly build a rapport with a seller, which is incredibly important. Okay. So now when you feel like you've have a rapport, you're walking around the property and you're looking and you're noticing rotating things down with the property. Now, I'm going to actually, maybe next week, uh, maybe even maybe even tomorrow, because um, i got to go sign some docs for a, for a closing. I'll, go, I'll take you down to a house and I'll walk you through a house and what it looks like, okay? Because it's important to kind of see about the property um, on what the heck's going on with the property, okay? You want to know what, what's going on and you want to notate down on the piece of paper because that information is critical for you when it comes to negotiation, which we're going to talk about how to make a low offer to a seller without the guy kicking you out of the house, okay? And part of that is writing down all the information. So you're walking through the house. If you see uh, some sort of, uh, in the ceiling, you see some sort of discoloration or some yellow or some paint over, guess what? That could be potential roof problems. You open up the closet, you look in the ceiling, you see the discoloration, that could be some potential roof problems. You ask the seller, so let me ask you a question, when was the roof replaced? They go, oh, we haven't replaced the roof since 1976. Well, guess what? That
that roofer needs to be roof needs to be replaced. Depending on the size of the house, that could be anywhere from ten to twenty five thousand dollars to replace the roof. Okay. So what you're doing is you're walking through the house and you're looking for information, and you can see and you look. Um, at the difference, you look at one house and, uh, and, and you're, you're trying to compare, the kitchen hasn't been updated. Let's say uh, it, has been, it has the old cabinets and the old baseboards, I mean the old uh, uh, countertops and has the uh, cabinets and the floorings, you know, vinyl and stuff like that. So the bottom line is you can look at that and, and kind of make a determination, um, is it 2015 standards or not? Okay, so you're walking around with the seller, you're getting an idea, and you're writing as much information down about the property as you possibly can um, to, uh, to basically you're trying to calculate a repair estimate, and we'll show you how to do that on the fly, which is, uh, which is pretty cool. So now after you're doing that, you're walking around the entire property, uh, you're getting uh, an idea of the repairs, then it comes down to right actually making an offer in a number. Now. Prior to you going on the appointment, you have to have a number in mind excluding repair estimates. You have to comp the property and you want to write a number down or even print out this comp calculator that we have. Um, that I'm going to show you here in a second, but that is imperative. So, okay, so now I'm going to take you into, I'm going to flip around, hold on one sec. So I'm going to take you into a recent deal. These are all the deals we've closed uh, recently. So I'm gonna take you into this one on Willetta. That one we made 30,000. This is our spread on it, 30,000, closing the fifth. This one closed on 11th, look at that one, 32,000, 14,000, 12,000, 4,000. That was 23, 1,400, 5,000, 12,000. These are all deals we closed uh, in, in the past, in, in June it looks like. So uh, 30,546, that was that's how much we made on it. Buy price 92, sell price 122,546. That was our HUD price. Um, and then there's the address 16. So I'm going to, I'm going to go into this property right here and I'm going to copy this right here. And I'm going to go to Zillow, Zillow.com. I know people, some people hate Zillow, but that's like a universal. I'm going to paste in here. I'm going to go boom. I'm going to let's do its thing. So that's the house. That's the actual house right there. Okay. 1617 Willetta. There it is, uh, and I'm gonna close it. So what, what we're doing right now is we're looking, now I'm gonna, um, here's a, uh, a uh, comp calculator right here. It's the Flip2 Freedom Comp Calculator, and what we're looking for here is the three lowest comps, then we're looking for the three highest comps, then there's an offer calculator, and then here is a selling exit price at 50, 60, 70, 80%. We'll talk about in a second. And then here is a simple uh, repair estimate calculator uh, that you can use. And then here is the, down here is the notes and the rules pretty much to follow, okay? So what I wanna do is we're initially, um, and I'm gonna, hang on, I'm gonna give you a download link. You can download this for free. So what we're doing is we're initially looking for the lowest, the three lowest comparable properties, okay? So now if we go back into Zillow, right here, we're in Zillow, there's the property address, right? And now we're gonna look for three lowest comparable properties. Now I'm gonna close this over here. Right, and typically what we do is we want to not, we don't want to cross any major. This is I-10 right here. This is the uh, this is the major freeway. Obviously, it goes across the entire state of um, the entire country. Um, so we want we don't want to cross a major boundary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to try to find three, and I'm going to scroll down like this, and I'm going to try to find three of the lowest of the low comps. Okay. Now let's look over here. So we got some pretty high comps right here at 92, right? We got 141, which is our property, right? And then we got 180, we got 148, that's low, 247. We got 61, if you can see that, sold for 61. 195, 215, 195, 195. So pretty much, if we're looking, our low comps are 148, we got right there, and that's 732 square feet. Um, we got one, that one, I wanna zoom out a little bit more, see if what else I can find. 
So I don't want to cross. We got one that auctioned off. We don't want that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into listing type right here. And I'm going to get rid of the coming soon, agent owner, and I'm going to put recently sold. So I'm going to get rid of this stuff right here. And then on more tab, I'm going to go down to 90 days. Okay, 90 days. So that's going to give me some indication. Let's see if I can, I'm going, to, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more right here and make sure that we are north of the I-10. Whoa. Zoom, oops. Zillow is crazy. Obviously MLS is better, but, okay, let me zoom in here. There's our property in Willetta. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. Okay, here we go. Okay, so basically the three comps all right, here we've got 62, 148, and 180. Those are our basic comps that we have 62, 148, and 180. So now, so we've got, let me see. I gotta make sure we're in the right area. Hold on a sec. So we got 62, we got 148, and then we got the 180 right there. Those are the three low comps. So now we're looking for the three high comps, and we've got 215, we got 195, and we got 195. So those are the those are the two, and we got a two, we got a 248 there right there, 248, but that house, 248, there's 247, it's 1,500 square feet if you can see. And there's a 215, 914 square feet. That's a comp because it's within our square footage. This is a comp within a thousand square feet. Um, that 247, it's a little big. Our subject property um, is our subject property is uh, 933 square feet. Okay. So now if I go here back to the comp calculator, I'm going to put the 195, 215, and 215. And what this is going to do in the comp calculator is give us an average price. It's going to take the average price of these right here at lowest comps and give us an average price of 130. And then we've got repair estimates, which are over here. So I got the property square footage, which is 933, and at 18 bucks a foot, okay, which is the is basically a mid of repairs needed on the property, okay? So at the low end, right, the low end would be 10 bucks a foot. Right? On the high end would be 20, 25 bucks a foot. Now obviously if the house is in excellent condition, you'd be down to about an eight to 10 bucks a foot range. If the house was trashed, look what happens if the house is trashed, right? It's gonna give us a, you know, $23,000 uh, fix up cost on 933. Remember, it's only 933 square feet. Now, if I go 18, boom, it's going to bring us down to like a $16,000. So now this automatically populates right here. So we got 130 minus a profit margin of 20,000 gives us an offer price of 93. Now, if I go back into here, you can see, look where we got it for. Our acquisition price was $92,000. Our exit price was 122. Okay, retail value, we comped at like 190, 195, like we talked about. So here we go as our 122 exit. So what this will do, this comp calculator, will actually give you an exit price. Now, we have 80%, 70%, 60%, and 50%. What does that mean? 80% means that if you're in a super hot market, you can sell it at 80% of value less repairs. So that would be an exit price of 144. If you're in a kind of an okay market, guess what? It would be 70%, which is the 141 of value, right? Minus 16 would be a 124 exit price. 
and then 60% if you, if the if the market's not that hot, it's not that good, it'd be 121 minus repairs 104. And at 50%, it'd be 100. So if you're in a super hot market, you want to lead up to the 80 to 70%. If you're in a market where it just sucks or maybe the house is not in a really good area, then you want to be at an exit price down at the lower 50, 60. Now, if you look at, we did at 70% less repairs brought us to a 122 sell price. I mean, 124 sell price, my fault. Our buy price was the 92. That showed us exactly, and it gave us, on this particular property, um, a uh, uh, a huge spread. Now, if you go at, right here, if you look at 31,000, 70% right there. 80%, we could have made $51,000 on the deal, 60% 11, and 50%, you would have actually lost money, and you would have had to offer less on the property, right? So in this particular case, this will tell you where your exit price is, right? I would always recommend starting higher in the 80, 70, 80%, and then you can reduce if you have to. But the bottom line is, here, this calculator, how it works, by just putting in the lowest comps, it averages out the highest comps, it gives you an exit price, and then you can do your comp calculator, which is over here, right? Your comp calculator, and then what it does will give you an exit price. So you want to do this prior, right? Prior, prior to actually going on the appointment with the seller. Okay, you want to do this prior to going on the appointment. I'm going to, actually I'm going to give you that comp calculator for free, um, but you want to do that prior to going on with the seller. So you have that. Print that out if you have it. Um, and then what you can do is modify your repair estimates based upon the square footage multiplied um, anywhere from eight to ten dollars up to twenty five dollars a foot, depending on how bad it is. If it's really bad, then obviously the 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 fly what you're doing on the fly is you're increasing your price per square foot of the amount of renovations that need to be done. You can do that on the fly, and then you can calculate that out of your offer price based upon your average of the lowest comps, which will then easily give you a negotiation point with your seller, okay? So that's the comp calculator. I'm going to show you how to get that for free. Now, also, if you're just joining us now for the first, uh, just joining us, just coming on here, um, that uh, we have a $1,000 giveaway right here. Uh, entries uh, for winning. You got to follow on Periscope, share the broadcast by swiping to the right and then sharing the broadcast with your followers. And then tweet about the show using, not suing, suing, <laughs> using hashtag flip the number two freedom.com, flip the number two freedom.com. Now we're going to pick one person. We're going to go into, uh, into Twitter, uh, find out all the people that have tweeted with the Flip to Freedom. Make sure that they share, share the broadcast and follow them. Make sure they're following on Periscope. We're going to pick one person. We're going to send them $1,000 cash plus a cool t-shirt. So that is the how to win the $1,000. Um, back in the zillow. All right. So now. Let's go into uh, now you have to, you're going to make an offer, okay? So now you are, you've got your comp calculator, you have your number, and you're kind of, you're kind of um, uh, determining repair value on the fly, okay? And now the house is worth 250, 215, 195, but you want to get it for a lower price. Remember, the seller is in distress, okay? The seller is in distress. So now what you're going to do is you're going to sit down with them and you're going to say, listen, Mr. Seller, right? Based upon these current low comps or the average of the low comps, if you take out the repair estimates that we're talking about, we're talking about $22,000 in repair estimates, and you back that out of the price, it's going to give us an offer price that's fairly low. So what you want to do is now be able to back out those repair costs and a profit margin on there, and then what you can do is you can make an offer to the seller, okay? And if you do that along with uh, letting them know that they don't have to pay any real estate commissions and closing costs and fees, there is a very good chance that they will go with you because you're justifying your offer price based upon uh, logical, you know, basic to get the property up to 2015 value. Okay. And what you do is take that low comp and then back out your construction cost on there, back out the repair cost 
um, and then get down to a price that makes sense. You want to get down to a price is what your offer price is, so then you can understand, you can justify it with your seller. Now, that's only if you cannot get a number out of the seller first. If you can get a number out of them first, that's even better. I've had I've I've written down a number inside my notebook where I wanted to pick up the property for ninety two thousand dollars, and I go in and say, "Oh, you know, Mr. Seller, I know we discussed. I can't remember, but what was the minimum cash you wanted to get for this property?" And instead of ninety two, they said sixty. I said, "Well, if we can get sixty thousand dollars, we're good." Boom. So I said, okay, we signed the contract for 60. If I would have came out with $92,000 and they wanted 60, I would have lost out on, you know, 30 grand, you know, just like that. So the bottom line is you always ask them. So let me ask you a question, Mr. Sarah. What is the minimum cash you need? I, 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 forgot, I thought we talked about it on the phone. I forgot to write it down. What did you say that you need for cash, the minimum cash? And they're going to give you a number. Now, that number might be higher then you're gonna to have to negotiate down using repair estimates and lowest of the low comps to get down to a, uh, a level that, uh, that makes sense close to your offer price, okay? So now that you've done that, now that you've done all that, what's gonna happen is either A, you're gonna be on point, right? Or B, you're gonna have a gap. Okay, so let's first talk about you're on point. So you're on point and you, and you make your offer and you, you back out your repair estimate and say, okay, Mr. Sarah, it looks like we need to be around $92,000. Um, let me ask you a question, Mr. Sarah. Would you like to close on Friday or Monday? Okay, if we close on Friday, right, then, you know, you can get your check before the weekend. You might be able to, you know, you know uh, be able to have everything all set up. If we close on Monday, at least it'll give you time to move out over the weekend. We can close on Monday. You can start fresh in your new place. So which would you prefer, Mr. Seller? Would you like to close on Friday or Monday? So now if you've named your price, let's call it $92,000 because that's what we're using for a number. And you say, okay, here's our justification. Here's our here's our comps if we back out our, you know, our our construction costs to get the property up into 2015 value. It's going to bring us back right around $92,000. So if that works, Mr. Seller, what would you like, when would you like to close? Would you like to close on a Friday or close on a Monday? That is called a alternate choice close, right? They either, it's A, if they land on A, you win. If they land on B, Monday, you win. It's an alternate choice, but whatever case they make the choice, and whatever choice they pick, you win. So you either can close on a Friday or close on a Monday. Another alternate choice question. Let me ask a question. Would you like to get a check at closing or would you like to get a wire into your bank account? Which do you prefer, Mr. Seller? Another alternate choice would be, hey, listen, Mr. Seller, do you want me to go pick up the keys from you at closing or do you just want to drop them off at title? Which do you prefer? Now, I like the uh, date close. Would you have to close on Friday or Monday? Okay. If you go Friday or Monday, then they go, well, now what are they thinking about? They're thinking about actually closing and Friday or what Friday or Monday. They're not thinking about the $92,000. Now, if they go, well, let's close on Friday, you say, great. You start writing up the contract and assume the sale. You write up the contract. Boom. Okay. Put the, here's, okay. Here's the date for Friday. All right. If I just get your Hancock right here, we'll get started. Um, and, uh, we'll open up escrow and get the process rolling as fast as humanly possible. So an alternate choice close talking to a motivated seller is critical of controlling the cold closing process. Here's what not to do. Do not go to the seller and say, hey, we're at 92,000, Mr. Seller. Um, does that work for you? Right? If you go to that, does that work for you? And what's going to happen is they're going to go, this 92,000, no, $92,000 doesn't work for me. We need to be at 120. Right? So if that, you can't do that. So hey, listen, so you go, if $92,000 works for you, Mr. Seller, say, great, would you like to close on Friday or Monday? And what that will do is we'll get them away from there closing on Friday or Monday. Okay. Now, what if they say, you know, $92,000 a little lower than I was expecting, and you go, great, Mr. Seller, where do you need to be to get the deal done today? And they're going to say, well, I need to, you're at 92, well, I need to be right about at 100. Okay. So you're at 92, they're at 100. Okay, that's called a gap, and that gap is $8,000. If your gap is $50,000, 
then it's very difficult to bridge the gap down. If your gap is eight, five, seven, ten, eight thousand dollars, there is no way you should walk out without getting that contract signed. If your gap is fairly, unless you're dealing with a multi-million dollar property, if you're dealing with a million dollar property, it's fifty thousand dollars. That's nothing. If you're dealing with a with a hundred and fifty thousand dollar property and the gap is fifty thousand dollars, that's a very tough gap to close. So in this particular case, your gap. In our particular case, you offered 92, they wanted 100, is now $8,000, okay? Now, what you can do is say, listen, Mr. Seller, I just want you to understand, okay? Because sometimes they don't. You are not paying in the real estate commissions. That could be six or, you know, that could be 6%, six or $7,000. You're not paying closing costs. We're gonna incur that. It's typically around 2% of the closing costs. You're not having to fix anything on the property. We don't have to deal with any appraisals. All you gotta do is get the stuff out you want. We'll take care of everything else. Now, knowing all that, Mr. Feller, we're paying cash and we get to close on your time frame. So now that you know all that, Mr. Seller, what is the minimum you can add, that you would absolutely accept knowing that all those things were taken care of? Now, a lot of times, what I found with sellers is they go, oh, I don't have to pay real estate commissions. I don't have to pay closing costs. I didn't know I didn't have to fix anything. Well, I guess I can make 92 work then. It happens all the time. It happens all the time with sellers. So you have to reiterate the fact that they're not paying uh, commissions, they're not paying closing costs, they're not paying any fees, they don't have to fix anything on the property, they can close in their time frame. If you reiterate that and say, listen, what is the minimum cash you need to get to be assuming we're covering all those things? Um, what's gonna happen in that particular case is they will, uh, you know, it's about a 50, 60% of the time, they'll just go ahead and accept your offer. If they go, well, I understand all that, but I really need to get $100,000. And you go, okay, Mr. Seller, you know, you know obviously we're, doing, we're taking all this, $100,000, why don't we split it down the middle and make it fair, okay? You're at 92, I'm at 92, you're at 100, let's just split it down, right down the middle, $4,000 a piece, I'll be at 96, and then we can make this deal work, we can wrap it up and get this off your shoulders. Um, if that works for you, then when would you like to close? Would you like to close on Friday or Monday? And that's an alternate choice close, okay? Now, what's another close? Another close, and if they say absolutely not, the minimum I can get is $100,000. Then what you do is what's called a nail down close. So what you're gonna do then is you're gonna get up and say, you know what, that is a little much for me. Um, I, I don't know if I can make this work. I'm gonna have to look at the property again and make a phone call. So you go outside, you walk around the property again, make a phone call, but before you do that, you tell the seller, say, listen, I don't know if I can get $100,000 done, Mr. Seller. I don't know if I can do it. But if I can, and I can commit to the $100,000, are you ready to sign the contract today and get this deal done today? And they're gonna go, yes. Okay, if you can get 100 grand, I'm signing the contract today. Now you get a verbal commitment from them. It's a, it's a commitment. Now all you gotta do is you gotta go back and figure out and make a phone call. Um, and typically what Nate does, my outside sales guy, he'll turn around and call me and say, hey, you know, I'm at $100,000. I don't know if this can work, but what do you think? I'll do the numbers real quick. And I say, just go for it at the 100. Make sure you get it signed today. Um, so that that is, uh, is, is critically important. So you're outside. You got to make a decision. It's better to get the contract, right? And then have to go back and renegotiate if you have to than to walk out the door for an $8,000 spread. Now, like I said, if it's $50,000, that's a whole different story. You know, $100,000, $50,000 is a whole different story. So that's down to negotiating with the seller. The seller wants to sell and you want to buy. So if you knowing that, they called, they're in distress, you know it. There may be a tax default was the list I showed you or a pre-foreclosure was the list I showed you. So if you turn around and you know they're in distress, Guess what? They don't have time to negotiate. They don't want to do that. So what happens is, is you knowing that there is distress there, you can negotiate and be able to get the best price possible as long as it's a win-win situation between you and the seller. So those are the closing techniques.
Okay, so now you're going, okay, they go, yes, I want to close on Friday. I want to get this deal done. I don't want to wait till Monday. Let's close on Friday. Then you're going to go, boom, what's the next step? Fill out the contract. Okay, so let me go, uh, let me go here. And there is the purchase contract right here. There's the purchase contract. Boom, boom. You're going to put in the subject property, legal description. All right, let me scroll down. Sales price, right here. It's basically a two-page contract, and you can read this over. I'm going to give you this for free. But look, look at look at this. All the other agreements. Uh, buyer agrees to purchase property as is condition. Contract subject to acceptable appraisal or evaluation of the property. Um, in the event of a default, sole remedy may, uh, shall be earnest money deposit. What does that mean? That means if there's uh, if you back out of the contract. The sole remedy is earnest money. Typically, the deposit, right, that we put on the property, the deposit is ten dollars. Ninety percent of the deals that we sign is is a ten dollar deposit. So if I'm going to go here, and if I go and I go to Willetta attached, boom. Here's our purchase contract that we signed with Willetta. There's my company. There's the address. There's the property. See addendum right here. Now this is a pre foreclosure. Buy to pay our closing cost right here. Look at we have. There's no deposit on there. Closing date five twenty eight. There's a signature. There's the agreement, and here's the addendum right here. Boom. And this is the addendum because the uh, this was in pre-foreclosure. There's an authorization to release information so we can get information about the bank. So this is a contract we signed right here that we made on this particular property. We made $30,546 on that particular property. Um, and there's a contract. And here's our BC contract. This is with our buyer. Loading. Right, and here's... For their buyer. There's a $2,500 non-refundable earnest money. So this was our buyer basically that uh, the close the deal. Okay. So uh, what I want to do is I want to give you first off here is the AB contract and there's the BC contract. There's a script and if you go to flip2freedom.com forward slash free stuff make sure you put the www in front of it. Uh, www.flip2freedom.com forward slash free stuff flip2freedom.com forward slash free stuff um, and then if you go to the scorecard it's flip2freedom.com forward slash comp hyphen calculator that will be the comp calculator you can just click there and you can download it for free so that's www.flip2freedom.com forward slash comp calculator comp calculator and you can download that for free, which is the comp calculator that I showed you right there. That's the comp calculator. So um, how you can download that is you can go to flip2freedom.com and you can use that in your business. And uh, it's actually really great because my crew uses it, which is cool. That's the comp calculator. And these are all things that I use that. And here's the AB contract that you can use. Uh, I hope that helped. Now, I'm going to open. I'm going to open it up for questions. I'm going to show chat right now and then open it up for questions. Um, I'm new at wholesaling. Anyone with experience willing to help me out and reach out to me, just, dude? Just watch these two videos. You don't need help. Just re watch the two videos. Take the information, apply it, send your letters, talk to sellers, get the deal done, and. Once you go through the process, just go. If you watch these four phases and you apply the information, you can get success. Okay, everyone thinks of like I gotta get my hand held. You, that, it, 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 it is a, a portion of that is true. It's it's good to do it, but you can do it. Um, what's reverse mortgages? How should I do it? Don't do anything with the ver reverse mortgages. Just if you haven't get a reverse mortgage, uh, disregard it. Um, what was that about the deposit us again? Do you have a promo code for Rebo Gateway? Call Rebo Gateway, tell them you're with Sean Terry, and uh, and they will hook you up with uh, a promo. Um, do you need both BC contracts and assignments or just one? Uh, you can, you can, I use the BC contract, 
Where are the where are the two videos? Two videos. Um, you are go to flip to freedom. Here, go right here. Oh, sweet. Here's video number one, right? And it's a flip to freedom. Just go to flip to freedom.com and go to blog flip to freedom.com for just blog. Um, so if that works, um, okay. Option contract versus purchase contract option versus purchase contract. If, uh, it, th that makes a big difference. Um, we only use an option, only use an option if, right? If the uh, you're you're not confident in the valuation of the property, or you're doing a JV deal um, with a joint venture, the rest of the time you use a, a purchase contract, okay. And I'm talking about with the seller, with the with the buyer, and I guess I guess it was purchase contract versus an assignment. I always get a purchase contract from my buyer in 2,500 non-refundable. Then I'll convert it into an into an assignment. The problem is most assignments. Um, most assignments, um, you have to show your profit right up at top. And I don't want a buyer to negotiate my profit on a particular deal because I show them a, an assignment. Okay. I'd rather negotiate the price of the property versus the assignment. How do you buy with no money? Essentially, that's what this whole training was about. Um, what you're doing is you're contracting with a motivated seller and then you're flipping the contract. Rebo Gateway doesn't have divorce or tax default in my area. What's the best alternative? The best alternative is find motivated sellers now. Find motivated sellers now. Um, where do I get the letter of authorization? Letter of authorization, um, I don't have that. You can get that from your title company. can give you that for free. Go to your title company, closing agent, attorney, and they can give you that for free. Will you buy with your buyer's money? Yeah, yeah. We, we use our buyer's money to close the transaction. If I have a contract with a seller for 50000 and then I get a contract with a buyer for 60000 I what happens is the buyer then wires in 100% of the funds, okay, which covers here, right, and also covers um, my seller, 50000 and covers the uh, the profit for me, which is 10000 What's up, what's up? Someone had an AdWords question. If you can ask that again, I appreciate it. Um, so do you automatically pocket the difference after you sell the property without an assignment? Yes. Yeah. The difference goes to you between the two contracts. Is it common you find zero? Um, how do you avoid the buyer from seeing your profit? Um, the way you avoid a buyer, buyer from seeing your profit is by doing a double escrow on the property. The average one to two deals a month, um, consistently many mail process. Do you recommend monthly send? Okay. If you want to do one to two a month, um, you want, you've got to mail anywhere from five to 10,000 mailers a month. Okay. Five to 10,000. If you want to 10 X that and do 10 deals, 15, 20 deals a month, you get to drop anywhere from 50 to hundred thousand mailers. What keywords should be focusing on AdWords? How should, um, if uh, keywords, there's tons and tons of different keywords that will convert in the flip to freedom Academy at flip to freedom academy.net flip to freedom Academy. Or if you're watching one of the trainings here, I actually give you my campaign and keywords, the ones to focus on. Um, but there's a ton of different words that convert from we buy houses, we buy ugly house, sell house fast. Those are all good keywords with double close. I don't need the money to buy the f myself first. Yes, that is correct. Um, with a double escrow, you're using your buyer's funds. If you can't do a double escrow in the area, you can use what's called transactional funding. Is it uncommon to get zero calls from sending 600 mailers in the process? It depends on the list and it depends on the mail piece. 600 isn't a lot. Um, also too, I'd make sure you get the right phone number. I had a guy send out a thousand letters. He's freaking out. Oh yeah, I sent out a thousand letters. I didn't get anything. And he found out the number was wrong, right? He didn't have his number correct in there. So you make sure you have all that. Um, make sure you have a good list that you're setting. What lead do you have? Double close. Yeah, double, double, double escrow, double close, simultaneous close. Those are all the same thing. That's what we use here in Phoenix. A lot of people use that across the country. Um, which is cool. Um, are you recommend a good with your buyers me before talking to sellers? Are you, do, are you recommend a, I, I don't understand that question. No, I, uh, 
he, here's the deal, and and I had this question yesterday: was do I look for the buyer first and then find the property, or do I look for the property first and then find the buyer? Um, I recommend looking for. We're in a market right now where the inventory levels are decreasing across the country. If the inventory levels have a ton of inventory and we have a six to ten month supply of inventory, then you find the buyer. Then you, you find the buyer, find out specifically what they want, and then you go and find the seller. Now that our inventories are low, we have a two to three month supply across the country, then you find the seller because the deal will find the buyers. Yeah, talk to sellers and buyers will come. Absolutely, you're right. Um, should we ask how much the seller owes on their mortgage? Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Great point. What is your AdWords leads to deal conversion one in three? Uh, it's about one in five to one in seven. Um, is there from leads to deals about one in five and one in seven? Um, but AdWords is a very is a, is a good source for that. Okay, I missed that one question. So if you ask that, um, do I do I use different landing pages for each keyword group? Yes. Different landing pages for each keyword, each ad group. Um, I have a hundred different landing pages that are all specifically designed for each keyword. Uh, what if a seller wants more than $10 deposit? If it's a smoking deal, give it to them. I've had sellers that want 5,000 deposit. I've had sellers that want 1,000. 99% of the time, if you have a truly distressed seller, um, they don't care. They just want to get the thing sold. Um, where do you find out about liens, et cetera, on the property from the title company? As soon as you get your contract with your seller, you're going to open escrow with a title company, escrow company, or, or uh, do a title search. Yeah, that's correct. And what they're going to do is a title search on the property. It's going to tell you everything about the property, any liens or judgments. Have you started back doing super wrap retail technique? Um, we do those but we only sell to investors we do not sell to owner occupants so we do not sell the owner occupants per the dodd frank act dodd frank act we only sell to investors would i be declined by title companies because of my age heck no dude there's 18 year olds there we had an 18 year old here today we uh not today but um in our meetup group that we've done two deals with that's made over twenty thousand dollars last month and he's 18, the guy looks like he's 12. After asking earnest money, what do I do with the money? You have the earnest, um, earnest money is made out to the title company and it's a deposit with the title company. Um, in a double escrow, how do we fund the A to B closing cost? Uh, the buyer will fund all the closing costs, all the fees, and there's not a dime out of your pocket. Um, what are the links to the spreadsheet and contract? Good question. All right, so the link to the spreadsheet is flip2freedom.com forward slash comp calculator, flip2freedom.com forward slash comp calculator. Um, to the contracts, the A to B and the B to C contract and the script is flip2freedom.com forward slash free stuff. That you can get that. That helped. Um, so where do you find buyers after you get this after you sell? Okay, so we're gonna talk about that in and we're right 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 now we're on part two. We're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about opening escrow, what to expect, what to do, what to tell the agent in the next episode. Then we're gonna also talk about how to find a buyer fast for your property so you can turn around and sell it. That's gonna be an episode. Uh, three and episode four. We're going to do episode three tomorrow and episode four on Friday. Um, and we'll talk about that. Do I only work in Arizona? No, I work pretty much all across the country. We do deals all across the country. We just closed a deal in Nebraska, one in Oklahoma. Uh, we got a couple deals in Southern California we're working on. So mailers, five to 10K postcards, yell letters. Um, I would do postcards um, on, and you send yell letters to specific niche lists. Um, your postcards are dropping in a week. Congratulations. So the, po the the letters go to niche lists. Like if you have a tax default and a pre-foreclosure, send those a letter. If you have an inheritance list, send those a letter. Um, the rest of them you can, you can post a, uh, yeah, definitely good luck. Um, the rest of them you can post, uh, you can post, you can uh, send postcards um, to the rest of those. But the goal is being consistent. 
listen, the more, here, here's the thing. I want to tell you a story. I was on the phone with a guy, and I was sending anywhere from five to 10,000 postcards a month. And we were doing, you know, with referrals and stuff like that, anywhere from, you know, five, six, seven deals a month and stuff like that. So that, that's what we were doing. But then I got on the phone with a guy, and he, he told me on the line, he goes, yeah, I'm dropping 130,000 mailers. And I was, I was sending five to 10, and I thought it was big time. I'm sending five to 10,000 postcards, man. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm kicking it, man. I'm doing five to six, seven deals a month, man. I'm doing good, making you know, 50, 60, 70 grand a month. Wow, right? But then I got on the phone with him, and I'm like, I'm a schmuck. He's sending 130,000 mailers a month. What the heck am I doing? And uh, so I went out, and I... Put the plan, put the team plan, so we can go out and send over a hundred thousand mailers a month. And holy cow, you know, it was uh, it, it blew up. We went from literally eight to ten deals to you know fifteen to twenty deals a month. Um, so the bottom line is is marketing, right? Marketing is especially direct mail is one of the key components to growth. But here's the caveat: I had this guy that called me up and said, "Hey." I want to drop 100,000 mailers and I want to crank this sucker out and I want to start doing it immediately. The bottom line is, how much do you expect to spend on address before I get a solid deal? Depends on the market. Dep that, that's a tough one. It depends, depends on the market. Okay, now back to what I was saying. He wanted to, he wanted to go out, I want to send 100,000 mailers. You have to be able to have the team in place first to be able to do that. You have to scale into it. You go from five to 10, then you send out 15 to 20, then you send out 30. You make sure your team can handle the volume and then you scale up from there because you can't send 100,000 mailers and have one salesperson answering the phone going on appointments. Otherwise, you're gonna lose a ton of money. Do you recommend postcards or letters to start out with? Um, I would recommend postcards depending on the list. Do you consider 500,000 population too small a market? No, I, I know guys that are in 500,000 that are, you know, are, are doing fine. So no, I, I would start there in your, in your market first. What else? Find a title company, build a rapport with them. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. You're hundred percent right. Um, Definitely find a title company. Is there anything versus a house title that prevent the deal from going forward like a lien? Yes, um, I've had a property where there was an IRS lien. We're buying the house for 200 and there's IRS lien for 250. That will blow the deal unless you can negotiate the IRS lien down. Um, I had a lien on a property where it was the, the, the seller's great grandfather owned the property and willed it and he got a water filter back in like 1940s right and he still had a lien on the property in the 1940s right so we had to get that cleared and it wasn't easy to do do I use a VA um, I have a VA that answers the phones from 501 to 8 o'clock at night and on Saturdays yeah so, um, well, what list should I focus on starting out to hit and what, uh, which ones the poker? I would do, I would go back and I would watch video number one and I tell you the exact list and the postcard to mail to target that specific list. Do you wholesale uh, in Warzone? Yes, I definitely wholesale in Warzone. We picked up deals for $8,000 and sell them for $18,000. Um, there are buyers for cheap properties for sure. Now, if you're in parts of Detroit where they're selling stuff for free, <laughs> that's a different story. Um, you know, they're, they're giving this stuff away, you know, but here in Phoenix, uh, primarily, I mean, we're pick, we picked up stuff for four or 5,000 and sold it for 15,000. So, so don't be afraid of war zones. Yeah, you need a contract to open it. Yes, you need a contract to open escrow on a property. Where do I get the list of sellers? Um, watch the first video. I took you into a company called Rebo Gateway. I showed you how to pull the list and how to get the motivated sellers. Go to flip2freedom.com. Go to flip2freedom.com. And if you look, if you go to blog, blog, and you go here, if you watch this right here, I give you all the links and show you exactly what to target for motivated sellers. It's pretty ninja. 
And yes, I use the word ninja. <laughs> That's pretty good. But you're, you'll like it. Um, it tells you what to target. I give you the mail. I tell you what to send, everything. Can you wholesale apartments? Yes, you can definitely wholesale apartments for sure. You can wholesale land. You can wholesale multi-million dollar properties. You can, it, what's great about real estate, what's phenomenal about real estate is you can, uh, let me see if I can find, I'm gonna try to find this story for you uh, if I can. Give me a sec. Uh, let me see if I can find this story for you guys. Um, how can I access a VA? How, how can VA access CallRail? You can just add a user. What's cool about CallRail, you can just add a user onto that and, uh, and they can do that. Okay. Where? Um, I'm looking for this story. Okay, hold on, hold on a second. I'm looking for that. You gotta, if I can find this story. I saw on Facebook. There's a $6,000. Here, check out this story. Home baby. Love this business. This is our, this is our flip to free. This is a private Facebook group. Um, you can't get access unless you're a flip to freedom Academy member. Um, but boom, baby, it's got his first check, $6,000, which is killer. Congratulations. Okay. You got re li listen to this right here. This story right here is from, uh, David DeVoe. And, uh, and I'm going to read it, read it right here. Um, this is not a brag post. My intention to share this is, is what is possible. Two years ago, my real estate life coach asked me if I thought I needed to wait until I had capital to start investing in real estate and building a team residual wealth. He challenged me to improve, prove to him that, that I thought I needed money was true. So he thought he needed cash. This guy, David, two years ago, thought I needed cash. So I researched when 15 minutes I found Sean Terry. I lived, breathed the Flip to Freedom podcast. So we, I have the Flip to Freedom podcast in iTunes, right? And uh, during vacation, 2013 took massive action. It was difficult to wrap my head around the wholesaling concept. Being pretty successful realtor, I was used to working my my ass off for uh, sell 50 homes per year, right? I wholesaled eight properties in the next three months and still kept the realtor business going. In the process, I realized this, if you can wholesale 20 K property, you can wholesale $29 million property. It's the same process in the deal. Two years later, now check this out. Two years later, now I own 20 investment units and just purchased the following $4 million in five lots, construction costs 4.9 million, Building 22,000 square foot livable condo space, sell out 17 million. I tied up the deal, raised my share of 35% equity, found four partners, profit will be a million dollars, and he's making $73,000 on a realtor fee. Dude, two years ago, I made $4,000 on my first wholesale deal. The sky is the limit. So here's the thing, guys, is that this business. And we get stories like this in the Flip to Freedom Academy um, uh, thing all the time. This can change your life. He was a realtor. He didn't know he could do real estate without any cash or credit. He decided to listen to the podcast. He got started. He got up and going. Now he's doing deals that are multi $17 million deals. They're doing it. I bought and sold apartment complexes for, for 13 to $15 million. What the thing about real estate is, it's great, is that you can do an $8,000 ghetto deal or you can do a $30 million deal. It's still the same thing. There's still people. There's still distress. It doesn't matter. And I want you to know that you can do this. Whatever skepticism. I understand skepticism. I get it. I get it. I'm born and raised in, from, in New England. My dad was the biggest skeptic on the planet. And I... Was exact. I would find fault in everything. I get it. I understand. I was the exact same way. The bottom line is this: is I had to get over that. Instead of looking at everything that could go wrong, look at everything that could go right. You don't think you believe, believe it? Go well. I don't know. This is. It sounds like I don't know if it can't be done. You don't know what you don't know.
Okay, if this guy would have thought that, David Duvall, he would have said, well, he's, you know, just a, just sounds too good to be true. Go ahead. Most people that say that are making thirty-five, forty thousand dollars a year. They're in a sucky job. They hate their boss. They're, you know, they go home, right? They go, commute to work in the morning, commute to work in the afternoon, go home, drink a couple beers, and go to sleep, right? And they're going, well, I don't know if it's going to work. You know, it takes a change in attitude. It takes a change in motivation. All I want you to know is you can do this because you know what? I'm not the smartest guy in the world. I could do it. Your academy versus clever and better, better investor, which one? I believe my academy is the best in the world, okay? I teach the specifics. I don't teach general. I don't teach generalized real estate. I teach wholesaling houses. I teach wholesaling houses, okay? That's what he says. <laughs> uh, that is this guy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, funny. Anyways, the bottom line is I teach I teach how specifically how to wholesale houses. Cody, which is great, and I love Cody. He teaches a, a lot about he I mean, he te he fix and flips house. He has dozen rentals. So he talks a lot about other different aspects. I talk specifically about wholesaling houses. That's my niche, and that's everything I talk about. How do I get one eight hundred fair offer? Um, contact support. Contact the Flip to Freedom Academy. Actually, go to here. Go go to whoops, sorry. Go uh, here and go to the very bottom and go to contact right here. And you can contact our uh, contact in down there. And uh, we'll see if your county is open. A lot of counties are taken right now, but um, I, I market everything from one eight hundred fair offer. Okay, which is cool. Um, are we done with the questions? I gotta go eat, man. I'm starving. It's like 2.20 here. All right, guys. I'm gonna sign off. Thank you so much for uh, being here. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, make sure to win the $1,000 $1, cash. You uh, follow me on Periscope. Share this broadcast if you're by swiping to the right and then streaming and then tweet hashtag flip to freedom. Um, if you do those three things, I am going to check all the tweets. I'm going to make sure that you are a follower on Periscope. And then what I'm going to do is um, I am going to uh, make sure you share the broadcast and then uh, and then pick a $1,000 winner on Friday. So it's going to be exciting. And that is going to be part uh, three and part four. You guys have a phenomenal rest of your Wednesday. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow for part three, then we'll talk on Friday for part four. Thank you very much for attending this. Uh, remember, if you want to get part one, we're going to have part two here. This is going to be posted up on the blog here. If you want to go to uh, flip2freedom.com, flip2freedom.com, and it's on blog right there, how to make 5K in 30 days or less. You guys, be safe, take care, and God bless.